Welcome everyone. In this video, we will look at an interesting uh, situation in which the force of friction does positive work. I know it's crazy because a lot of people tend to say that the friction force only does negative work. Well, that's not right. That is correct most of the time, but not always. And I will show you why. Uh, to do that, I will draw myself a surface. This is our surface. We have a block here, which I will call 1, and we have another one that is named 2. We push with a force of F. The whole system, the system containing the two blocks, is moving to the right with a speed of V. And we are given that 2 doesn't slide, so it moves with 1. You can see an example uh, to this system when, when, let's see, when you are in a restaurant, for example. Uh, if you go and go to a restaurant and order, uh, let's say, a glass of water, well, they will probably bring the water, the glass of water, uh, on top of a plate, right? The waitress will be holding from the plate and they will bring your water. Uh, in that case, you know that the glass of water will not slide from the plate. It will move with it. And you can also try the exact, the exact uh, system that we have drawn here yourself. You can find two blocks, put one of them on top of the other, and push the block that is below. And you can see that at some speeds, with some force F, you can achieve the case that the upper block does not slide. So this system is very possible to happen. This is not a hypothetical system. We see this all the time, in fact. So here we go. Let's draw some free body diagrams. Oh, before that, I will just say that the, uh, the coefficient of friction between, between the surface and block 1 is 0. Just to keep it simple. And there is friction between the two blocks, which I will call mu s because there is static friction in action here, right? Two is not slipping. So there is static friction. It is stationary relative to block one. Uh, this is the free body diagram of one. We have the weight downward and one g. We are pushing with a force of f. And what else do we have? Well, we have the normal force acting on it, uh, on one, by the surface. And there is also the normal force acting on one, by two. And there will be an another force that I will draw in a minute, but let's draw the free body diagram of two first. For two, we, of course, have M2G, its weight. Uh, we have the normal force acting on it, caused by one, right? These two forces, they are Newton's uh, third law pairs. Uh, and, well, and we know that since this is moving to the right, well, actually, maybe I should have said these are moving to the right with some velocity v, and they are accelerating. Okay, you could think of this as they started at rest and now they are moving to the right, so they have an acceleration to the right, which we call constant. I should have said this at the beginning, but I'm saying it now. So they are accelerating to the right. In that case, we know that there should be a net force acting on our block 2 and it should be to the right. So there is a force here to the right. Well, what can this force be? Yeah, you guessed it, right? It is the force of static friction, right? This is the force of static friction. And of course, from Newton's third law, we know that if one is uh, exerting a force of static friction on two, then two is exerting the same force, equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction on block one. So we have drawn this. And let's look at the work. Let's look at the work done by the force of static friction. Well, if you use the dot product of force of static friction, 
and the distance traveled. Let's say that these blocks uh, travel for a distance of delta x while we observe them. Observe them, and obviously delta x is to the right because the velocity is to the right. Delta x is to the right. Uh, well, then this means we have force of static friction, the magnitude of it times delta x, the magnitude of our displacement, the distance that we have traveled, times the cosine of ang the angle between them. Well, they are pointing in the same direction. They are literally both pointing to the right. So, this angle is zero degrees, or zero radians, you could call it, it doesn't matter. It is zero, and cosine of zero is one. These two are magnitudes, so we get a positive work. We got that the work is greater than zero in this case. And don't forget, this is the work done by the force of static friction. This is the work done by the friction force, and it is positive. Now, you could do the same thing. Uh, you could use this system and have block two maybe accelerating or sliding on block one, and you still could get a positive uh, uh, work with kinetic friction as well. And I'm not going to show it in this video. I want you to think about it. It is very similar to what we did, but it is a little bit different. I, I do think that you can figure it out yourself. And this is it for this video. I hope that the main takeaway from this is that it is very dangerous to make generalizations in physics and in science because it is not a law that the force of friction can't do positive work. It's not a physical law like Newton's law or Kepler's law. It's not like that. It's the generalization that we make. It, is, it seems to be right because we have looked at many systems and we are thinking, okay, the force of friction always opposes the direction of motion, so it should always do negative work. Well, no. As you can see, in a system like this, it can do positive work. And it is very likely that you could uh, find another system that uh, the f f work done by the force of friction is positive. Uh, so if you, find a, if you find a system like that, please write it in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions or comments, please write them as well. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.